More than 20,000 ex-offenders come back to Cook County every year after spending time behind bars. Elizabeth Brackett reports on a program that helps ex-offenders transition back into society by getting them that critically important first job. It's a tough job, sorting through trash at the Chicago Recycling Center. But it's a job MC Ellis is grateful to have. Ellis, 38, got out of prison last July after serving 15 years on a murder conviction. When he got out, able to only read at a third grade level, he didn't have the skills for most jobs. And he came home to a very different world. That's changed. What was the biggest change? Uh, uh, computers and telephones and... The computers uh, and telephones? Yeah, so he had a net, so... Did you have any idea how to work a computer? No. No training in prison? No. How about a phone? No, I still don't know how to use that one. Nearly 700,000 people are released from prison every year, according to the U.S. Justice Department, and around 60% will commit another crime. Diane Williams, president of the Chicago Bay Safer Foundation, says Ellis and others fight those huge odds when they are released. If you can picture a brick wall, you've pretty much got the picture of what they face when they come home. There's very little opportunity for them as regards to employment, and they have to have really a wheel, a wheel of steel to get through that wall. To help them get through that wall, the Safer Foundation, a nonprofit organization that works with current and former prisoners, developed a transitional jobs program, a program that places ex-offenders in a job when they can't get one themselves. The goal is to establish a good employment record and move on to a better paying job. Right now, the only transitional jobs being offered are at waste management plants sorting through trash at 650 an hour. The transitional job acknowledges a couple of things. It acknowledges that when people come home, it, the, the time that they're most likely to get themselves in trouble is as soon as they get home. So you have an opportunity for a structured environment for them to go to quickly. The second item that is addressed is the fact that people also have a need for money immediately upon release. Ed Smith, the alderman of a tough West Side ward in Chicago, says without a job, the more than 15,000 ex-offenders who come back to the city every year find money elsewhere. How strong is that lure of the street corner? Very, very strong because it allows them to make money. If you can't go to a job every day and, and make money, you're going to go wherever you can go to make that money. A key aspect of Safer Foundation's transitional jobs program is finding employers willing to hire ex-offenders. Seven years ago, Allied Waste Services took a chance and began hiring ex-offenders that had gone through the Safer Foundation's programs. Today, ex-offenders make up 60% of the workforce here. Allied Waste Services General Manager Bob Kalibic says employees who are ex-offenders and have come through the Safer program have only a 4% turnover rate though he admits he was initially concerned about hiring ex-offenders. Well, yeah, I'm not going to lie. We were very skeptical about, you know, safety of our own employees plus the other folks that were in the plant. Um, so we were guaranteed or promised that um, people who have made mistakes in the past and now who are looking to better themselves and get back on the right track. For Ellis, the job at Allied been something he'd never seen before, a paycheck. Uh, so what were your thoughts when you got this? Hey, it's in my name. You got to check. Some, some ain't never uh, seen. For Franklin Spite, it was a way to get a better job. After two and a half months as a trash sorter at Allied, he left the transitional jobs program when he found a better paying job at Supreme Medicar, a private company that transports elderly patients to their medical appointments. They started you at Ally because I feel that's the lowest of the total pole. I mean, if you can make it through sorting through garbage, if you can make it through that, if you can handle that, if you if you're durable enough, you know, to withstand the, the smell, the stench of garbage, if you can handle that, then you can pretty much take on anything. The interest in transitional jobs programs marks a trend away from just punishment and back towards rehabilitation says criminal justice professor Arthur Lurigio. There's been some swinging of the pendulum 
back to rehabilitation, which is where we began in our crime control policies in the 1960s. In the 1970s, we started to drift away from that. And then in the Get Tough era, which began in the 1980s and continues pretty much un unabated to date, we paid less attention to rehabilitation and services and more attention uh, to punishment and incapacitation. But the question is, are transitional jobs a solution? For the first time, the effectiveness of those programs will be scientifically measured in Chicago and three other Midwestern cities. Alan Alverding, president of the Chicago-based Joyce Foundation, says the foundation will put up $5 million for the study with matching funds expected from the four study sites. We thought, all right, let's take a look at transitional jobs for this group of people who have so many challenges, ex-prisoners, to see if this will work for them. Our ultimate goal, of course, is after a three-year period to really know what works, what doesn't, which guys it works best for, what strategies seem to be the most effective, and then make a case for a significant public investment in this strategy. Illinois Senator Dick Durbin says he will look at the study results closely. As a member of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on Corrections and Rehabilitation, the senator attended hearings in September on the needs of ex-offenders. Well, first thing, it was in 10 years in the Senate, it was the first time we had a hearing on corrections. The first time. 10 years we've been putting all of these thousands of people in federal prisons, and they've come out of these prisons, and we've never stepped back and said, well, what's going on in the prisons and what happens afterwards? You're going to have obstacles no matter what you do. It's how you deal with it. I want all you guys to know one thing. Yes, you are an ex-offender, but that does not have to plague you or have to be a curse. The study, scheduled to begin in January, will track the employment history and recidivism rates of those in the transitional jobs program. Also tracked will be those who receive more limited help, like job preparation and resume writing, the more traditional programs that SAFER has run for years. What they find will give the policymakers the data needed to decide which programs to support in the future. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Elizabeth Brackett.